Hi guys. Yes, I'm still standing on this side of the shop because we are still working on the hand tool wall on the other side. I know it doesn't take a lot of sleuthing to figure out that we had the hand tool wall finished before we started filming these shots, but I don't know. I'm still kind of trying to preserve the mystery of it. If you watched part four, you know that my nervous finger tapping led some people to believe that this project was going to be a workbench and boy, were they disappointed. I get it. Everybody loves workbenches. Just ask Chris Schwarz. But don't worry, we've got you covered. Go over to stumpynubs.com and look at all the plans for shop projects. Yes, it's an impressive collection of innovative jigs and fixtures. Thanks for saying that, you're too kind. But if you scroll down to the workshop fixture section, you'll find a 2x6 Rubo workbench. Click on that and you'll find two videos about building your own workbench. Believe me, you'll learn a lot even if you don't buy the plans and build that particular bench. But don't go there until after this video is done, because this is about to get interesting. We finished the two side units, and now we'll build the center unit, which includes some secret compartments and some other clever ideas that you can apply to your own shop fixtures. Now let's get started. In part four, I told you how my hole problems are ruining my life, how this cheap five layer plywood crumbles if the pocket holes are too close to the edge. But I'm in too deep to turn back now, so I'm working that lever like grandma at a slot machine, and the payoff hopefully will be quick assembly without glue or clamps. Another problem with pocket hole construction is the work pieces tend to move a bit when you drive in the screws, and you look like a crap woodworker when everything comes out misaligned. So whenever possible, I clamp something down as a fence right on my line to counteract the force from the heads of the screws as I drive them in. I also like to use spacers cut from scraps to ensure that both ends of a shelf like this are of equal distance to the shelf below it. This third wall unit is really big, so I have to build it in sections and then figure out how to assemble it later. This time I made a story stick with all my shelf spacing laid out on it. Story sticks used to be important woodworking tools, but they've fallen out of favor in a world of laser measuring devices and digital 3D modeling. If you've ever misread a measuring tape or forgotten a critical dimension, you should consider using a good old fashioned story stick. Bonus, you can save them and someday pull them out and share the story with your grandkids. I've temporarily attached the side panel for the center unit to the side of an outer unit just to hold it in place while I work. Then I attach some temporary cleats to help me assemble the shelves. And by shelves, I mean this giant carcass. This would be a lot easier if I had Mike in the shop today, but he's off waxing his stash or some such nonsense. He may grace us with his presence later on, but I'm doing just fine without him. The temporary cleats are doing the trick, and thanks to my world-class design skills, everything's coming together perfectly. Speaking of old men, I did notice some sag where it didn't belong, so I clamped on a little extra support until I can figure out a permanent solution. I later found out that these little shelves I'm installing here are pretty much useless, which sort of contradicts my recent boast about my design skills, but we all knew that was a lie. But at this point here in the video, I'm still oblivious to my error. So instead of kicking myself over that feature, I'm actually congratulating myself over a different one. You see, this top section was supposed to be two long continuous shelves, but at the last minute, I added this big space in the middle for reasons that will become apparent in good time. Another thing I'm noticing here is this sucker is a lot bigger than it looked on the computer screen, which of course means I should invest in bigger screens. Here's a pro tip. Why use a block plane to create a chamfer when you can beat the bevel into the edge with a hammer? It's like a snot, eh? The chamfer was only there so that I could force this piece into place. It was pretty tight. At some point in his life, every woodworker will say those nine magic words. I need a bunch of fingers in this board. I'm using plywood instead of solid wood because the alternating grain will prevent these fingers from splitting off over time, and because I got a bunch of scraps all over the floor. I also used a larger piece than I needed so I could support it on the miter gauge during the cuts and then trim off the excess later. Smart thinking, Jim. As I put this little guy in place, I bet you can guess why I made that gap in the shelves. If you haven't figured it out yet, I won't spoil the nonsense. I mean, spoil the suspense. We're having too much fun, am I right? This back panel was a late addition to deal with that sagging issue. It squares up the whole unit and it actually ties all the various shelves together into one self-supporting mass. It also adds more weight to what is quickly becoming the second fattest thing in the shop. 
They call these things piano hinges, but I have never seen one that would support a piano. I hope it'll support the weight that I put on them later. Look at me. I still think those shelves under these hinge panels will be useful. I was so young and naive back then. So the first secret compartments aren't so secret anymore. Now you know where I store my gold ones. If you ever find yourself in my shop thinking of pilfering my supply, you should know I peed in one and you don't know which one it is. So the safe bet is to leave all my cold ones alone. And look who decided to show up at the first mention of cold ones. The stash has a way of slipping into the shop just when the hardest part of the job is finished. That's fine. He doesn't know which cold one has the pee in it either. Meanwhile, I have some innovating to do. These are chisel trays. Yes, that's a magnetic strip. Some people say you shouldn't put chisels on magnetic strips because it will magnetize them and the metal shavings will stick to them and when you sharpen them you'll just have a mess and I don't know, the whole world will explode. I think that sounds like one of those chat room theories thought up by people who do their woodworking at their keyboards instead of trying it out in the real world. And yes, I see the irony there. So I'm going to try and see what happens and maybe I'll report back to you on it later. I didn't edge band the miter saw workstation, but that was the nicer seven layer plywood. This five layer stuff is full of voids and I need to cover my shame with thin strips of pine. I hate edge banding, but Mustache Mike can't hide from it even with his camo hat. I have to say, it does dress things up quite a bit. I mean the edge banding, not the hat. I was joking before about my design skills. We all know that's nonsense, but I am a little proud of this idea. I attach wooden tracks inside this long shelf to support the chisel trays so they can slide back and forth and over each other and give me access to the space behind for more secret storage. I may even add another one to the back row later. I do have a lot of chisels. I also have a lot of other junk. I've been using these plastic drawer units for years. They work well enough and they stay hidden behind the bench anyway, so I may or may not bother replacing them with real drawers later. Here's when it hit me that those hinged panels won't open enough to reach the shelves inside once the planes are in place. I took it pretty well, but Mustache Mike nearly broke a hip when he fell over laughing at me. I didn't care because it wasn't my hip, and because now is the best part of the whole project. I get to unpack and reorganize my tools. I love this part. It's why I've been looking forward to this project for a long time. Well, that's enough for today. Next time, we'll make some doors and drawers, then I'll give you the full tour of the unit once everything is in place. For now, you can sit back and have yourself a cold one, because you've earned it, my friend. For more great tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker, check out Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. You can read and subscribe for free at StumpyNubs.com.